Hello, everybody. Welcome to Introduction to the Visual Arts. This is one of the very, very most fun of many of the projects that we do in here because uh, it doesn't seem like we're making art, but when we're done, we actually have created something that's kind of interesting. We're looking at Jackson Pollock's Autumn Rhythm, and what Jackson Pollock did is he decided um, that he wanted to do something different than what had been done before. He was very interested in the Surrealists, and the Surrealists were always trying to get into their subconscious. They were always trying to get into a, a different level of thinking that was not just a conscious level of thinking. And they believed that everybody had a personal mark and that there's a mark that you make when you're listening or you're, you're talking on the phone or you're in a class that's really, really boring or whatever and you're doodling in a book and you keep doodling the same mark over and over. Well, Jackson Pollock was interested in that mark. So what he did is he put his canvas on the floor of his studio and he would take his canvas and roll it out and it was like very large. It would be like maybe eight feet wide and probably 20 feet long. And he didn't put it up on the wall or he didn't attach it to any stretcher strips. He just laid it on the floor. Well, I don't know if you know this, but if you don't take canvas, if you don't put a painting ground on canvas and you put oil paint on it, what's going to happen is the, is the paint is going to destroy the canvas eventually. And that's what did happen. Well, another thing that Jackson Pollock was thinking about when he made his large canvases is that he knew about the painters in Europe and that most of the paintings were hung salon style. That means that it would be all the way from the bottom of the floor to the top of the ceiling. And it depended on it, the luck of the draw where your painting was hung. So these artists, they said, okay, I need to have my painting big so people can see it depending on where it's going to hang. So they painted really, really large. And so Jackson Pollock knew that, so he wanted a very, very large painting. So um, I don't know how well it worked for the European painters, but it must have worked well because they continued to make very large paintings for a long, long time. So Jackson Pollock painted his drip paintings. His nickname is Jack the Dripper. And these are kind of a drip painting because what he did is he took uh, sticks. He didn't even take paintbrushes. He took sticks and he used five gallon paint cans and he stuck, or not five gallon, but one gallon paint cans. And he stuck, he took the stick and he stuck it into the paint can. And then he took that stick and just went snap on the canvas. And if you do that, snap with your wrist, snap, and you have some paint on a stick, you're going to get a splatter on the floor. And that's what he did. And he'd walk around his canvases and he'd, he'd dip, splatter, dip, splat, dip, splat, dip, splat, all the way around his canvas. And then he'd go with another color. And he'd dip, splat, dip, splat, all the way around again. And so he did this many, many times until he got the kind of repetition that he was looking for. Now, he says that he's going on this idea that everybody has their unique mark. And so that is what he tried to do. So I have some samples here of what students have done in previous classes. And you can see how they have a kind of mark because every one of their dip splats um, are very, very uh, similar. And so um, I think that maybe Jackson Pollock was on something when he says everybody has a unique mark. When I look at my paintings, there's always a kind of painting mark that I have in my paintings that repeat over and over again. Now, I would only use two or three colors. I would start out, I would make sure that I put lots and lots of newspaper down and find a place that if I splattered some paint, uh, it could be cleaned up. So you might even want to go outside to try this. So what I would do is get a piece of 9 by 12 paper out of my multimedia pack. 
I would get some of my tempera paints. I would use maybe two or three colors. I'd find a stick or I'd find the back end of my paintbrush because you can't touch the canvas in any way. You're just splat splatting paint on your, your uh, palette paper. So that's what I would do. And so I, and then just walk around your canvas uh, or, or your back or whatever you're painting on several times. Now you can just, if you look at these, you can see how there is a method and a rhythm to this kind of painting. This kind of painting is actually called action painting. So what is so much fun about this project is everybody comes up with their own unique mark. So I challenge you to do an action painting, a drip painting. It should only take you, oh, five or ten minutes after you have your painting made. Be sure you let it dry well and then go ahead and be sure you clean up your mess and clean up, um, you know, all of the evidence. So some of these that I'm looking at are a little scribbly, but not the ones that I'm showing you. So you, you can see how you have this repetition. So go ahead, make your action painting, and um, have fun with it. And I'll talk to you again next time. Thank you for your attention.